Hey guys, Doug with Pine Tree Line, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about the craziness that happened when we took our trip down the Spanish River. I wanted to share a little bit of that with you, be able to tell you a little bit about uh, how to book a trip or plan a trip down the Spanish River, some of the things you want to look for. All right guys, so one of the things you want to do is, uh, the first thing you want to do is book a train uh, through Via Rail. And the train is the Sudbury to White River train, which only leaves on Saturdays. It's like 20 bucks, a couple bucks tax on top of that. And it travels um, to all the places that you'll want to potentially stop off at. In our case, we went up to the Forks and we got off there and then we came back down uh, from the Forks and we got, uh, we got off at the Elbow. You have to get north. So you want to book the train first because the train only holds a limited amount of canoes. I don't know the exact number of canoes that they limit it to. There is a cost for bringing the canoe on the train and the cost is $50 uh, per canoe. So you want to keep that in mind as well because they'll be looking for a payment for, for that as well because it takes up a, they do take up a lot of room on the train. There was another guy that uh, the outfitter mentioned that uh, he hadn't called early enough for his canoe for the train so he needed to pay for a ride to Duke Lake to get uh, to be put in there and you know, I'm sure that cost, uh, you know, a few bucks. Uh, logistics is kind of the big thing when it comes to uh, this trip is uh, in terms of uh, you can get on the train and get north and then paddle south, but where's your vehicle going to be and where are you going to leave it? You could leave it at the train station and have someone pick you up at Agnew Lake or the Elbow and bring it back to the Sudbury train station. But an easier way to do things and the way we did it uh, is we went through an outfitter and we went through uh, Spanish River uh, Outfitters out of Fox Lake Lodge. Uh, which is one option. The other option is to go through uh, Agnew Lake Lodge, which actually Todd and Ray, who were on the trip with me, uh, they used them last year, and then this year we used uh, Spanish River Outfitters. And uh, they were fantastic, excellent. By using them, you, it gives you a lot more options. Now, be, based out of Fox Lake, uh, they're right by the elbow, uh, probably about five kilometers from the elbow. They took our vehicle the next day or a couple days later to uh, the elbow so that we'd have it there when we got out. They drove us up to uh, Carche with our equipment, all our gear, canoe, and brought us up there to take the train and uh, we started our journey that way. So logistically it worked out really well. So as far as uh, fees go, if you want to stay at Fox Lake Lodge for a night because uh, you're leaving Saturday morning uh, to get to the train station, you can do so for like 10 bucks a night, bring your tent, sleep there. For them to bring your vehicle over to uh, the Elbow and have it ready for you, it was a $30 charge. To drive our gear, canoe, and um, all that stuff, it was $40 per person uh, to drive us to Carche to get on the train. Another good point about using the Outfitter is because you're in the Spanish River Provincial Park, you're gonna get your park passes through the Outfitter. Uh, and I believe it's nine bucks a day. The advantage of that is uh, you don't have to go online and go through all that and your outfitter will know that you're in the park. So if you don't come out and especially if you have one of their canoes or something like that, uh, then they can look into it further. It's another kind of backup for any kind of emergency that might happen. And the canoe rental itself was $40 a day. All in all, I think our trip costs about 400 bucks. Initially, I was gonna bring my canoe, the canoe actually right here, um, fiberglass canoe. And I'm so glad I didn't. And uh, if you watch the video, you'll know why. And here, here's a clip of why. Going this way. That wasn't a good idea. Now, after seeing that, you can see that it was a lot easier uh, renting a canoe for 40 bucks a day. Whatever beating the canoe takes, uh, it's not your canoe. The canoe we rented from uh, the Spanish River Outfitters was um, an old uh, town, Penobscot 164. It's got like three layers of uh, polyethylene. And like this thing was built for whitewater stuff because it could take a beating, it could climb over rocks and stuff like that. And uh, because of the low water levels, we, ha we ended up having to do quite a bit of that. The little mishap that we did where uh, the canoe uh, filled with water, got up against a couple of rocks. Uh, initially, and I'll, I'll show you the clip here. I just ripped the top off. Oh. Todd was trying to pull out um, the stern of the canoe and uh, actually popped the, uh, the seat and it ripped part of the gunnel um, on, on that end of the canoe. And um, it popped, a couple of rivets uh, basically popped out. Throughout the trip afterward, we had to put a couple of uh, dry bags underneath uh, the stern seat in order to keep the uh, the gunnel onto the uh, the body of the canoe. So uh, these things can happen. When we brought the canoe back to the outfitter, no issues at all. They didn't give it a second thought, not a big deal. A couple more rivets in there and everything would be fine. But 
you know, if it's your canoe or your personal canoe, then that's something you have to consider as well. The good thing about booking a trip down the Spanish is uh, you're close for a, a good part from the forks down, you're really close to the railway line, which could be an advantage in an emergency situation. In our case, it actually came up the thought of maybe having to catch the train the next day because uh, the train goes from Sudbury to White River on Saturdays, but it comes back from White River to Sudbury on Sundays. So my thinking was, well, if if all else fails and the canoe's pinned and you know we can't move the canoe at all. That was unbelievable. I thought we were camping here and then grabbing the train. Cause thank goodness the track's right there. Worst case scenario. You know, we might have to grab that train the next day kind of thing. So we'd be able to stay at the side of the tracks and when it came by, flag it down and get back on it. In our trip, there was a, a couple other ladies, two ladies and, an, and one of the ladies' uh, mother who was a little bit older, um, they had a, a canoe and a kayak and they went down and got off at the forks the same as we did. They actually departed before we did onto the water. We met up with them in the first big set of rapids and they had all fallen into the water uh, as it turned out and it was pretty rough that, that particular spot. As we continued past them, uh, I know Ray had asked them if they were okay and, and what and they said they were and they were going to just swim across, get to the other side and, and carry on. As it turns out, we found out from the outfitter later, um, they actually uh, ended up uh, using their sat phone and, and calling and booking some time on the train as it was uh, coming back out from uh, from White River to Sudbury. That's the advantage of uh, having a sat phone or maybe having an in-reach or some kind of um, device like that because there's no cell service. Uh, otherwise, you know, you could flag a train down and, and at least they could send help or help you out. Things were different when we were there. It was low water, uh, which meant it was a lot it was challenging in a lot of ways because you were, you know, going around rocks and dealing with a lot of rocks. We didn't have to portage anything. We went through all the rapids. We went through uh, all the swifts uh, from the forks uh, right to the elbow. And you can't necessarily do that when the water levels are, are higher. So that was just our experience. It was a little bit, you know, different than perhaps what you'll go through if you if you decide to go. It's a good river to, you know, learn your chops on. It was my first time uh, doing any whitewater um, canoeing, so that was kind of cool. But from what I hear, it's a, it's a good place to start. So beautiful campsites, uh, very uh, big, clean. Anyways, guys, that's a little information for you. If you want to plan a trip uh, to the Spanish River, there's some stuff online. You can ask some questions in the comments below if you have any questions uh, that maybe I can help you out with. If you have anything else you can add uh, to uh, planning a trip, throw in the comments so everybody can uh, check it out. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give us a like and uh, subscribe if you haven't and consider um, watching the uh, two-part series on our trip uh, down the Spanish. It was a lot of fun. Check it out. All right, guys, take care.